Heidi ho neighbors, Radio Goji here, and welcome to Squeeze the World Toys. Um, now before we get into the thick of things, um, I just wanted to say that this, I, I do realize that this video is pretty much two months in the making. Uh, at least this video and the next one. Uh, the toys in question came out at the end of April, um, and here we are at the beginning of July. Um, and I wasn't, I have waited until now to do that. Uh, I wasn't able to pick these up right away, uh, because I did get paid at the beginning of May, but I had to use that money to pay for rent and bills, you know, as you do. Uh, so I ended up, uh, waiting until my next paycheck, which was a couple weeks later, to order them, and then the package, uh, got stuck in the mail, like, stuck in customs from Japan for, like, two weeks or something like that, which normally doesn't happen, which was a little con disconcerting, but I did eventually get the, um, get the package at the end of May. And then, pretty much uh, all of June, I've been trying to, you know, find a time where I could get together to do this with Jordan, but, like, all of the dates we came up with, uh, Jordan either forgot or he had to cancel, so, um, seeing as I do like to show off the packaging for the Japanese toys, uh, and I really want to get rid of this packaging that I've had for a couple months, uh, I do want to just get these, at least these couple videos out of the way, so, um... Apologies for the uh, length of time it took to get here. I do know that we are still behind on the toy line as we speak because another entry in this particular series just came out this past weekend, but uh, uh, again, rent and all that. But in the meantime, let's take a look at the next entry um, that I'm going to be covering in the Kamen Rider X-A Level Up Rider series. Entry number 17, Kamen Rider Paradox Perfect Knockout Gamer. Um, I do also want to point out at this point that I have actually gotten a chance to watch the entirety of the series. Um, so I am very much familiar now with all the characters, all their, you know, the history and how they got all the different rider forms and whatnot. And basically, Paradox, uh, as we seen before, actually he's on the uh, side of the box here. Remember, he was the uh, level 50 gamer who could change between um, the perfect puzzle and and knockout fighter. Well, he was able to get his hands on a gamer driver and plop his uh, Gasha Gear Duel into it and merge the two games together into perfect knockout. Uh, the box doesn't exactly say what uh, level he is, but he is level 99. Actually, I think he says it on the back. Yep, it says level 9, right? 99. Level 99 right there. Yep, level 99. Um, and the reason we have a mode change thing is because much like Zombie Ganem, uh, this did not... Uh, much like Zombie Ganem and... Um, and uh, the original Paradox figure, this did not come with a separate sheet of, sheet of instructions. But let's go ahead and take him out of the packaging here. There's no instructions in there. And take him out of his tray. And take a look at the figure itself. As long as I don't keep dropping it and stuff. So, here he is. Um, I didn't bring down any other figures to compare him with. Actually, let me zoom this down a bit so that we can get a better look at him. Actually, I didn't like that. Um, this is the figure itself, obviously. Um, it looks really, really cool. Um, I like how they were able to incorporate, uh, you know, pretty much everything. Uh, like, they, like they've, they've been, they were able to, to, to hybridize uh, a lot of the features from the, um, from the previous... Uh, um, from the previous figure. You have a lot of uh, red and blue duality going on here. Uh, like, you have, like, one red shoulder, one blue shoulder. You have one red eye, one blue eye. Uh, you even have, like, a mixture of the hair here. Even though it's, like, uh, red and blue interspersed throughout. Like, you have the spikiness of the uh, of the uh, knockout fighter hair with the kind of emo-ness um, a bit of the uh, of the perfect puzzle hair. And the, uh, the costume itself is more or less a um, kind of a sort of martial arts-looking gi, I guess you could say. Well, not really a gi, but... Um, like a kind of an outfit there. You also have the knob on the back. The knob doesn't do anything. It's frozen in place. Uh, has all the same articulation as you would expect. Um, also, ha it does have the, uh, the standard life bar, even if it is a little bit covered. But um, it has all the same kind of uh, articulation you come to expect. It even has the double knee, even though you really can't use that for anything because he doesn't have like a level one or a lesser level that he can go into a shell for. And uh, he also does come with a Gashikon weapon, which is what we saw in the box. This is the uh, the Gashikon Parablay gun. Um, it's all molded in uh, red, 
Um, and it's made out of a very, very soft plastic, like softer plastic than I'm used to uh, with this line. Like, the other ones feel a bit more solid. This feels like it was made out of a, like a pencil eraser or something. Um, and, uh, but it can actually transform. This is um, much like the Gashikon Sword for Brave. This can actually uh, change from an axe mode into a gun. And um, one of the things I do like is um, on the detailing, like each of these modes is kind of like representative of one of the one of the uh, games that uh, that comprises Perfect Knockout. Uh, and even on the um, on the show and in the in the uh, the deluxe toy version, it has you know specific game sounds for those modes. So like the axe is very much like Perfect um, not Perfect uh, a Knockout Fighter. And even the gun, the other side of the gun barrel, when it's not active, has the flame pattern on it that uh, Knockout Fighter is known for. And then when you swap it around, uh, and it's the gun, um, which is indicative of more indicative of perfect puzzle, uh, the other side of the axe um, blade has the puzzle pieces on it. I always thought that was kind of cool. Uh, also, something that I noticed when I was like kind of going through like rehearsals and whatnot. Um, I did note that, like, I, you know, I had noted like like before, you can you know change the position. Like just basically twist the top like the uh, the Gashikon sword, and it was basically then that I noticed that because this is in two pieces, it can you know come off and go back together fairly easily. But uh, the hilt uh, is actually the same as the uh, it's like the same mold as the Gashikon sword, uh, with the exception that the uh, of the, uh, the 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 gashet slot is double wide because you know it's the dual gashet thing. But he can hold it with ease, as can be expected. So, fun times all abound. Now, again, as a figure itself, this is awesome. I love the way it looks. Um, and it, 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 it not only does it look great on its own, but it does look great, you know, next to all of your other figures. Um, and as, you know, as a figure, I do highly recommend. But, I, it does, that doesn't mean I don't have my gripes with it. And it's not, it's, it's not there, there with there being gripes about the figure itself, because like I said, the figure itself is awesome. But it's part of a gimmick figure line, and it's not compatible with any of the gimmicks up to this point. Now, obviously, he's not going to be able to fit, like I said before, he's not going to be able to fit into a level one shell in terms of like a level one paradox or something like that. Um, but he is almost completely incompatible with any of the uh, the power up armors, like you know the robot game, or like any of the level three, five, or fifty power up things, um, because he's not really given the slots for it. He has holes on his legs and holes on his arms, um, but there isn't and there isn't any kind of there aren't any kind of holes on his on his shoulders. These shoulder things don't come off like you know some of the armor was able to come off of Zombie Genom. This doesn't do that. Also. Probably the most important part is that there are no slots in his uh, in his neck for the tabs on the armor to slot into, so he can't equip any body armor whatsoever. Now I didn't bring them down because, quite frankly, I think it would be, oh, it would have been a waste of my time to even um, you know try to put everything on there. But the only things that I can think of off the top of my head that this would be compatible with, um, as far as like armor pieces go, would be the um, the the like the rocket fist thing from um, from the robot gamer, the turntable from the beat gamer, the leg armor from the um, from the hunter gamer because the dragon blade and the dragon gun aren't going to fit on whatsoever because the shoulder things are in the way, um, and the arm cannons from the simulations gamer. Uh, there I also no, no, just noticed there aren't any holes on the sides of the. Uh, on the sides of the uh, the torso, either to go with that. So he can equip some of the. I guess he can equip some of the weapons, or anything like that. And even then, I think the hunter legs armor is kind of a stretch because this soft plastic um, costume part is in the way. But I mean, it just seems like kind of a uh, kind of um, it just it just irks me because it's inconsistent with the rest of the line. Like even Zombie Ganem and um, the other Paradox figure. And the double action uh, uh, X Aid figures could at least partially, like, like, like could you know, it, it wouldn't, it wasn't perfect, but you could still equip the armor 
parts to them. Um, I just like with some of them, like the uh, the double action X eight was a little bit more pain in the ass because of the um, the the hair in the way when you tried to put up the uh, the visors or whatever. But um, but this you can't put anything on this, which is again inconsistent and it irks me. But I can't fault it too much because the figure is so damn good. Um, so I do recommend the figure. Uh, I do recommend picking it up. Um, it looks great with the rest of the uh, with the rest of the line on the shelf, or even if you're you know playing around with the figures, or if you have a kid who likes to play with the figures. Um, this goes great with that line. Uh, it's just a shame that uh, the line isn't going to be going for too much longer. There is one entry out now that has been released since, and I think that's the last entry uh, in the series, which is odd because they have there are so many writers that they've introduced since. You know, I mean, I mean, obviously the the, net, the um, if you'll allow me to uh, previews of current attractions here, or of a uh, previews of of, of uh, future attractions, maybe um, the net because the next thing we're going to be looking at is uh, entry number eighteen, which is the uh, X Aid Maximum Gamer and Muteki Gamer set, which are basically X Aid's final forms. But you have so many other. Riders that have been introduced, like Common Rider Kronos, Common Rider Poppy, Common Rider Laser Turbo. Um, I mean, I can kind of forgive them for not doing a level a level zero Genom, because I was able to at least fudge the level zero Genom. I, I just took Zombie Genom, put a, a dual Gashet uh, gamer driver on his belt, and gave him the Gashicon Breaker in sword mode. And there you go, he's level X zero, and that's as close as I could make it, even though the chest plate isn't exact. But whatever. Um, the thing is, like. As far as I know, they don't have any of those those other ones planned. We don't. We're not. And and Kronos is like the main bad guy right now, so it doesn't really make much sense for them to not make a, a Kronos character. I, I do know that there is another. I I did discover there is another uh, line of figures that are candy toy figures that are kind of like the mini plot where you can build them, and that's pretty much like had everything under the sun, including legend uh, legend gamer forms, legend rider forms, um, one off things like the uh, the Juju Burger. Um, uh, armor, and even, you know, riders like, like Cronus. Um, but, uh, as far as I know, the next entry that we're going to be looking at is the last planned entry for the Level Up Rider series, which is kind of sad, because I kind of want figures for Laser Turbo and Cronus and Poppy. But, um, who knows? Maybe Premium Bandai will kick back in. I know that there's been one Premium Bandai, I think, that I haven't been able to get uh, my hands on. That uh, was the, uh, the Level 1 X8 with full articulation, but, uh, who knows, maybe I might get my hands on that and they may not do anything with Premium Bandai for this line because they seem to have gone on to the Soto line, but I digress. So when we next come up to the um, Level Up Rider series, we will be talking... Let me zoom in here just uh, for the final shot. Uh, we will be talking about the um, the Maximum Gamer and Muteki Gamer set. Uh, so until then, I've been Radio Goji and I'll be here next time. Join me, won't you?